to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen! Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. 
Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was feeding them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs, as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crew. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, are you then the Son of God? He said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will, therefore, have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently, demanding, with loud shouts, that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wish. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children, for the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with them. When they came to the place that is called the skull. They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. 
The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan in action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ.
grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, Paul writes in Philippians. He then quotes, we think, a hymn about Jesus, possibly the first ever in use. And it is about how Jesus emptied himself, literally poured himself out. And every year, the church takes a whole week to celebrate this self-emptying, which culminated in Jesus' suffering, execution, and burial. Look at the words, look at the actions, dear friends. Jesus longs to spend time with those he loves, even his betrayer. He reminds them that he has come more like a waiter than a paying customer, as one who serves with no status, no visibility. He prays for Simon Peter to have faith, to turn back and to repent after denial for the sake of his other disciples. He earnestly encourages prayer for the sake of his disciples. He says no more of this and disarms every Christian who would use violence for his sake. He reflects the words of accusation used for him. You say that I am. You say so. He tells the women to weep for themselves and their children, to consider what this horror, this state execution, means for their own future, as he has. According to an ancient tradition, possibly in addition to the gospel, he prays for the forgiveness of those people who crucified him. And look at the inactions of Jesus. He does not name Judas as the betrayer, at least not in Luke. He does not accuse Simon Peter. He does not insult. He does not humiliate. He does not correct. He makes no answer to most of what is said or asked of him. He seems to go through his suffering and death almost passively, at least in this version of the story. What is on Jesus' mind? What is the mind of Christ? At least today, it seems to me to be marked by compassion. Jesus understands. Jesus understands even his enemies. He knows that he cannot convince or argue the relig religious leaders into faith or even into changing their minds. He is more concerned about the future of the daughters of Jerusalem and their children than his own suffering. He bears the mocking and the evil of the people around him and the absence of many. Even the aid that is given to him is partially forced. Simon of Cyrene is made to carry the cross and yet Jesus still seems to be overwhelmed with his concern for others. So this is the mind of Christ. Serving at the table rather than being seated. The greatest as though he were the youngest and the least. The leader like one who serves. And on the cross between two insurrectionists. Jesus is mocked and goaded by one. At least that's what Luke says. I'm not so sure. Perhaps this one is simply praying. Have we not known this prayer? Aren't you the Messiah? So save yourself and save us. 
Is that derision? Or is that the cry of a dying one who will take any salvation available? To all this, Jesus says, nothing. He responds to this other condemned criminal, the one who notes that he, Jesus, has done nothing wrong. This one who sees Jesus suffering unjustly, who asks nothing of him but to be remembered. Doesn't that echo something we heard at the very start of the passage? To be remembered. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, who asked to be remembered by his friends and his followers, is now asked to remember this one. This one who is guilty, yes, but sees Jesus as he is. And perhaps it is not the request so much as the fact that he has concern for Jesus, notes Jesus' pain. That's what compassion is. Seeing pain and vulnerability of the other. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. A mind that does not defend yourself, but looks back and sees and honors the pain and suffering of others. A mind that understands even your enemies. A mind that does not seek to correct, but to care. A mind that comes among the people to serve. A mind which notices the quiet ones, the ignored ones, the weeping ones, the dying ones, the repenting ones, poor ones. And in this, Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
those for whom Christ died and who believe in his death celebrate and beg for his help, compassion, and comfort. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found in your liturgy. We believe in one God, Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God of God, of one being with the Father, through him and all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came out from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, through the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and was not crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, he seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who the one who can be everybody, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one who will have not been asked to the church. We the acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawing close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Work through our bishops, Elizabeth and Tracy, our Dean Matthew, our pastor and our council, that we may proclaim the good news faithfully, sustain all the baptized and increase their faith, especially the people of Trinity and Tenfly, Lord of Life and Tabernacle, and the North Carolina Synod, the Northern Great Lakes Synod, Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Republic of Croatia and of our own congregation, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love. Train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation, that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. <clears throat> for those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Bring peace to the people who suffer from war, especially in the Ukraine. Strengthen those who work to eradicate racism and reform unjust systems. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation. Accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Catherine, Jamie, Matt, Marianne, Lynn, Jean, Richard, Leah, Becky, Sarah, Catherine, Virginia, Peter, Matt, Bruce, Bob, Nancy, Stephen, Mark, and Bonnie. Merciful God, please save our prayer. For Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially John, Fred, Turn, Otto, 
and Michael Agricola were commended into your hands. Remember us when you come, when, when we come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with each other as we're able and comfortable. Peace be with you. You are invited to be seated, dear friends, and as the altar is being made ready, a few announcements pertaining to worship and to stewardship of this congregation. As I know, most or all of you are aware, uh, this is Palm Sunday, and Holy Week is coming, and that is to say, it is here. We have services at 7 p.m. throughout the week until next Sunday morning, where we will celebrate the resurrection at 10 a.m. I hope that you'll be able to join us for some of these. Note that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are online only via Zoom. The recordings are posted to YouTube. If you have questions or don't know how to find those links, please speak with me or a member of council after worship. If you don't know who those are, just come to me. I've got the decorative groups. For those who are interested in supporting our ministry through time or talent, please note, see me and I'll help you discern how you can help support our ministry and proclamation of the gospel in this place. If you'd like to make a fiscal gift, there is a chest in the rear of the nave. You can also mail us something to our street address, 308 First Avenue, Asbury Park, or you can use the Vanco app, which you can find in your app store, or set up direct deposit through Vanco. And Todd Button is the person to see about that. Again, see me if you have immediate questions. Some words about the administration of Holy Communion for those who, who may have been absent or may have been new or maybe visitors. Communion will consist of me coming to you in the pew. I will be masked. Hopefully, my assistant will be so, I'm not sure. And then we'll have a mess on. Um, okay, that's okay. It's optional. It's optional. I want a mask just to be through an abundance of caution. I will dip the wafer, which is the bread, into wine and hand it to you. Try not to touch my fingers, okay? If you're not comfortable receiving wine, simply say no wine. If you do not wish to receive communion, you can say that as well, and I will offer a blessing instead. Are there questions about the administration of full communion? No? Fantastic. Dear friends, as we prepare now to feast on the body and blood of Christ, let us sing together our offertory, On My Heart, in print your image. Michael will play it through once in the whole total, and then we'll sing it together.
Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat and drink the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, that we may live in him and he in us now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Mystery 
that is you, dear church, receiving what you become, the body of Christ. Amen. As we commune together, let us sing in 616, Jesus, remember me.
Dear friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they by your spirit in love. Sanctify your body in service. Nourish your mind in wonder and preserve your being in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, before we enter into our sending, a few brief announcements. First, there is fellowship in the parish hall of White Mac, straight down the center aisle. Please join us for refreshments. Thanks to Diane Brock for coordinating that. As I mentioned, there are Holy Week services at 7 p.m. each night of the fall of this coming week. The first three are short services of the Word. That's Monday through Wednesday, online only via Zoom. Recordings will be posted afterwards. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Vigil of Easter here at 7 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the resurrection at 10 a.m. Are there other announcements for the good of the community? Hearing none, I invite you to bow your heads as you receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn. Take my life that I may be.